Welcome to the Empowering Patients Podcast, your weekly take on all things related to new care models in healthcare, remote patient monitoring, chronic care management, and hospital at home. I'm your host, Theo Harvey, and I'm the co-founder of CenterMed, the leading full-service RPM platform in the industry. Today, I also have on a call our clinical manager, Anna Paris. Hi, Anna. How are you? Hi, how are you? Great. Well, thank you for joining today. So we have a packed show today. Uh, today, we're going to get into a little bit discussing American Heart Month and discuss how to guide patients with monitoring their heart health at home. So this is a really important topic, and uh, we're glad to have Anna on board to kind of discuss this. Uh, but first, let's get into the news. So the latest in healthcare news, Amazon Care Goes National. For those that don't know, Amazon Care was launched in September of 2019 to bring the most you know, patient-centric health care to customers when and where they need it. So Amazon has you know, started this program to work with employers to understand how to um, give the employees the best health care. Um, and so what they're going to do now is basically provide access to a range of services like urgent care, primary care, uh, COVID testing, flu vaccinations. COVID vaccinations, testaments of preventive care, things of that nature. So one of the issues is if the issues can't be resolved via video, Amazon said they'll be actually sending uh, individuals to the nurses, to the patient's home, which is very interesting. So um, so we'll see how this works. But, um, you know, Anna, as a, as a nurse yourself who may have done home visits, you know, how, how does that work, you know, if you're trying to deal with patients, you know, especially, uh, you know, in remote settings and trying to, you know, guide them through nurse, uh, you know, type of uh, healthcare uh, environments. Right. So it's always a challenge when you are kind of going into a patient's home and you're in their setting and you're trying to do any kind of health care that they may need. Um, I think that people are used to Amazon and so they're used to kind of that instant gratification and they know the name. So that's definitely a plus for them, I think, that they have going for them. But then on the downside to that, it's kind of like, well, we know Amazon delivers our packages next day, but how good are they with healthcare? Like, can we trust these people? So I, I think that might be a challenge they may have, um, but I do see them doing well with it. Um, I think that as long as they have a strong clinical team and the people know who they're doing, patients will be receptive and um, it's definitely a convenience for them. Yeah, that's a great point. I think Amazon, you know, look, Getting into healthcare is always a good thing because, you know, they do have a supply chain understanding. They knew how know how to move things around pretty quickly, as we saw during the pandemic. But, you know, I think, unfortunately, healthcare and big tech companies, there's a graveyard of a lot of them have tried different things and they just didn't be successful. For instance, uh, Microsoft, I don't know if you remember, they had uh, remote records that people could take with them and they could bring into the doctor's office. They tried that. That wasn't success. IBM Watson, that was supposed to be a big thing in healthcare, this AI type artificial intelligent computer that's going to give you your diagnosis. And then IBM said, hey, we can change healthcare. They end up selling off this unit and, you know, for a big loss because they couldn't get any big clinical systems to join up with them. So that was a, a failure. And then Amazon themselves, uh, they tried this previously with uh, Haven Health, where they work with uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company. And Google to create kind of like this kind of employee kind of healthcare, but uh, it disbanded after uh, about a year. So, you know, I, I commend them, you know, to get into this space, but it's very hard to kind of do healthcare as we both know as ones who work in this industry. And so you just can't throw a lot of money at it and expect it to be successful. So uh, to your point, you know, having a, a good clinical staff, you know, having great workflows is really key. And it's not just about the technology all the time. Yeah, definitely. And I think an, another thing that's important is Amazon, since they have, haven't been in healthcare, there's so many guidelines, there's so many restrictions, HIPAA, all these things that come into play. So you kind of have to know your stuff and you have to make sure your staff knows what they're doing. So I think it'll be interesting to see how it plays out with them. Yeah, I, I do. And also one of the things that comes up is what happens when employees want to keep the doctor they have of Amazon even if they change jobs, right? Or what if they come to Amazon, they say, do I have to use the same, you know, facilities and everything for, for the care? So I think it's going to be a hybrid model where people are still going to have to insure, do everything, but then Amazon may help help them with their urgent care needs or something like that. But 
you know, it's still a lot of issues. I think what we've seen that could work, you know, if a lot of the uh, you know primary care doctors and you know, specialists really focus in on kind of helping patients um, and keeping that relationship with them, I think that would be helping for the future because right. a lot of the patients um, they don't know their doctor, you know, then of course they're going to be kind of out of sorts. Um, so we'll see how this evolves over time. Um, you know, um, more to come on this, but this is very interesting uh, for this market right now. So. Uh, with that being said, let's go and get into our, 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 our feature today. And we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, American Heart Month. So with American Heart Month, um, and I know you brought this up to our team, about how this is important. This is a special month uh, to understand heart, uh, having, you know, healthy heart habits, um, especially for our patients who tend to be in the Medicare age. So can you, can you walk us through how are you currently educating patients on our heart health? Yes, so um, heart health is definitely important, and it plays a huge role in um, what we do here because we do monitor patients on their blood pressure, and then we have scales too, um, which I think some people forget is related to heart health because if they have congestive heart failure, one of the major things that we have to look for is fluid overload. So are they retaining fluid? Um, so we have these devices. We have a team of nurses who are making sure patients are – adhering to kind of lifestyle things that will benefit them and benefit their health. So we're definitely making sure that they are paying attention to their diet, meaning they're eating fresh fruits, vegetables, staying away from processed packaged foods and limiting their sodium intake too, which is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and then another thing that we're really kind of honing in on is stressors. We know that, you know, sometimes patients, they only see their doctors, what, maybe once every three to six months. With our team, they're talking to us weekly, biweekly or monthly. So we kind of get a better idea of what their home life is like, mm -hmm. um, what their stressors are. And so just kind of educating the patient on coping techniques, um, whether it's reading, you know, taking a warm bath, drinking warm teas, exercising, things that can just promote healthy heart, um, lower their blood pressure lower their cholesterol and just their overall health. Ah, that's a great point, stressors. I think we all kind of deal with that in our daily lives. And so, uh, you know, uh, how are the patients responding to this, right? So this is, uh, is this new information for them? Is it something they've heard before? And then, you know, really on the flip side, you know, what are the results? Are we seeing, you know, patients get better, uh, you know, BP readings over time? Right. So I definitely think that um, patients respond well to it. Um, it's definitely something that we don't see overnight. We would have to just reevaluate in the next 30 days when we call them again and say, hey, I noticed your blood pressure readings are looking great. And they'll say it's because I'm limiting my sodium intake or, you know, since our last conversation, I haven't been eating out as much and I've been trying to, to stay home and cook. Um, so we definitely see the benefits in it. And um, we can tell when we go look at a patient's readings and they have a really high reading. We call them and they say, you know, I really wasn't listening to you. I ate something. I have one patient in particular who's like, I love my McDonald's fish fillets. So <laughs> he, he eats those and he knows he shouldn't, but at least he knows when you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of taking small steps, even if it's cutting back once or twice a week and then slowly increasing that. So we definitely see the patients responding. Uh, I love it. I love it. And so, um, you know, I think education is uh, really a big part of it and just reminders to help the patients. You know, what are you seeing? Are you seeing anything um, with patients understanding? You know, are they uh, open to kind of sharing this knowledge with others? You know, one of the things that we're, we're looking to, to, to evaluate is how patients can communicate with each other. Right. And so do you see that the patients who are doing better, you know, do they, do they feel like, hey, I feel like I, I understand how to do better with my heart health? Is this something I'm willing to share? I'll be curious to get your, your thoughts on that. So I definitely think, um, especially in some patients when they live with families, maybe they're um, geriatric patients who live with their, their children and grandchildren, they're definitely sharing that knowledge with them um, and making sure the whole household is eating healthy. Um, and for them, it's not so much maintenance, but preventative because they may not have these, these chronic conditions. Um, and then, of course, you know, I'm sure that they're sharing it with their friends. I have one patient in particular who he always exercises at the YMCA. 
Um, and so he's making sure that his buddies on the bike next to him are doing what they're supposed to do too. Um, so I definitely think that there are patients who are being proactive in their communities and their homes and, and sharing the information that they have that's, that's helping them with their health. I love it. I love it. Well, look, Anna, thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. Um, this is just to give everyone a sense of, you know, these weekly podcasts, just a little snippets on what we do here at SensorMed, but more importantly, how you can help your patients and empower them to deliver better, healthier lives. So please like and subscribe on our Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, we also do this via YouTube as well. So follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn at SensorMed. Um, thank you all for being on this journey with us to a better um, empowering your patients to better health. Thank you for your time and we'll catch up with you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.